Recently, we reviewed the Pandora Box 10th Jammer Edition. It was an easy plug and play solution for old arcade systems. But today, we're going to look at the Family Edition. Does it hold up, and is it worth upgrading? Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribe. Can I interest you in a back rub? This arrived. Point. So this is the Pandora Box 10th Family Edition. This is the console version of a plug and play gaming box with over 5,000 games already installed. Grab some controllers, plug up the power, connect to TV, and off you go. So here is our red box. This is for your control harness, and you can connect your arcade sticks and buttons. On the other side, a jumper. This is where your power switch goes. And underneath that is for a mono speaker, if you have one. Let's have a look around. So there's a hole here that should be for LAN cable, but they probably messed this up with the case design. The port's actually here behind this plastic, but we have Wi-Fi anyway, and currently this is only used for updating the firmware. Around here we've got ports for power, a 2 or 3 amp adapter should do fine. HDMI out, VGA, but we should probably need the audio from here, you can adjust volume, this button's to get in the settings screen, and two USB ports for controllers or adding games. So let's compare the boards. To open the jammer version, we need to take out four screws, then we can pull off the bottom plate. For the family, there are no screws, but there are tabs that need to be pushed in, and then the top comes right off. So they look quite similar, but they share some components like the heatsink and fan. It is a pretty noisy one, but if it's in a cabinet, you can't really hear it. But if you want it in a console, this may get irritating. The Jammer one needs to be powered by Jammer Edge, and also has a slower microSD than the family board. If you're wanting to upgrade a previous Pandora box, the process is very simple. As all the plugs and cables are the same, we can simply switch the board, and off we go. Plug and play. And that's it. Boot up takes around 33 seconds, and we're straight into the games list. Select a game, and off you play. Let's move into the setting menu. Setting? What are you talking about? We got Wi-Fi, button config, and we can test the I.O. and custom mapping. It's only for buttons, so only light tinkering allowed. Extra menus are for controllers and light guns, which haven't been released yet. Over here is the coin menu, if you wanted to add a coin mechanism to your box. And we've got the auto exit, Two graphic filters, which we'll check shortly. Time per credit, which is for console games. And then gamepad mode, where we can assign each player to a controller. We can change difficulty in lives, make a favorite list, or we can hide certain titles. It's also possible to hide whole platforms so we don't see any console games at all. There's only three languages to choose from here. English, morning, Korean, Kassam. and Spanish. Take talks. Let's have a quick look at the graphic filters. This is with all filters off, but there's still a bilinear blur. 3A have always had this on the boxes, so if you want sharp pixels, it's better to stay with a Pandora Box DX with Pandora. Let's have a look at the scan lines. These look awful. 3A really need to update these. If you want a solution for this, we reviewed a scan line generator that was pretty good. Links to the top of the screen. Here's the HD filter. Some people might like this. I'm not a fan. I like my from King of Fighters. She can spin her fans around me anytime. And this is with both the options on. If you look closely, there is a little latency here. It's not as bad as the Pandora Box X, but it's not the snappiest on the market. I'm going to leave you now with some gameplay. King of Fighters 99. There she is, my queen. Mortal Kombat. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on Naomi. Demolish Fist, a Thomas Wave. Killer Instinct Gold. So 
so it's not running 100%, but it's still one of the quickest Pandora boxes for this game. Let's try the Super Nintendo version. Or how about Tekken 6? It's still the very old version of Pizzapur with a leg jiggle. One advantage of this is we can play two-player on the same bar top, very much like an arcade. Outrun. But what are you doing? If you got a Pandora box, you play arcade games. There we go. 1944. Gunbird 2. But if you notice on the sides, we've got these black bars. All we can do is add games with a micro SD, like we did in this guide, and all of the Tate games actually rotate automatically. Awesome. Now we can rotate the monitor. Uh, ah. So this monitor only rotates in one direction, and we have no options to change it anymore. Gunbird uh, 2. I guess we could try one more tactic game. Dodon Patch. One handed. If you're not using the arcade controls, you may need to use a controller. We've tested many of them in the video above, and the 10th works great for most of them, but there are problems with added PSP and Naomi games. We've let 3A know about this and hope they can fix it in a firmware update. Light gun compatibility is currently at zero, as 3A's own light guns haven't been released yet. Let's get to the pros and the cons. The 10th anniversary is a decent upgrade if you want in better compatibility with newer systems from a Pandora box, and the aspect ratio switch and button mapping elevate this to a new level for 3A games. Unfortunately, we still need more options like dip switches, a new scanline, and a way to remove that 3A blur. This is a definite upgrade on any stock 3A box, and we hope the issues can be fixed with firmware updates. But if you're sensitive to latency and prefer to play only the classic arcade games, it might be best to stick with Pandora DX.